great pleasure to have you here with Gregario Passoni. Hello, Alvaro. Nice to meet you. And thanks for having me in your great podcast. And uh, a lot of cycling in Italy are very well connected, and this is not different with you. So if you can share your heritage personally as the Vicentini family in cycling. Yeah. My name is Matteo Vicentini. I am the product manager at Passione Titanio. I'm a collector of bicycles. I'm a bike nerd, as a lot of friends says to me. And I am the son of uh, Giro Italia winners in 1986, Roberto Vicentini. And how was it to be a son of a Giro Italia winner? Being a son of a Giro Italia winner is a great thing, but also a very bad thing because, yeah, it's, there, is a, there is a lot of pressure on you when you are young, in particular. My dad was very careful about it and he denied to me to even cycle. I always want to be in the race, but my dad never allowed me to do that. So yeah, they both, my, my parents bought me a, a motorbike and says, you can race with motorbikes and not with bikes. <laughs> and how was it uh, fun uh, on race on motorbikes? Oh yeah, it was super fun. It was super fun. I was quite good actually, but uh, yeah, when you have to choose between study and sports, your parents always have to say, you have to choose study. And then I graduated in architecture and start working as an architect. After some time, connect, how did you connect with Passoni? After some time in architecture firm, more than a, more than a year, actually, I really felt that the architecture firm was like a prison for me, it was only about sketching little things, sketching about stuff that maybe you probably never saw in reality because the projects are huge. The team of people are mm, massive. And then I start to looking at something new, something that I always been very passionate for. I used to be a bike collector since I was 15 because I was looking for my dead stuff, my dead spikes uh, all around the world uh, in the very cr all the crazy place in art. And then I became passionate about this, of cycling, cycling, of course, but of also in the product itself, in the bike itself, in every component of the bike itself. I really like all the parts of the bikes, all the mechanical stuff. And yeah, it's nowadays it's 15 years of collecting, study and reading about this. Do you have a preferred one on your collection? Yes, for, yes, of course, because a lot of people know my dad as a road cyclist, but very few of them know my dad as a truck rider. My dad was an Italian champion on track, but it was a very brief part of his career and nobody know that. I have the, the lucky of, I was, I, sorry, I repeat it. I was very lucky to find one of his own bike made in Columbus sale, crazy tubing of the eighties, super and that bike was used in on track by my dad and there is still nowadays the name written on it the oh. bike was used just once yeah that that's my favorite bike my collection yeah in talking about sony was formed by luciano Passoni in 1989 can you share a little bit about this history and the motivation of Luciano? Sure. Sony, as you said, was founded in 1989 by Luciano, 
and Afro Luca, his son. Also, uh, Sano was a very passionate rider, and uh, as you can hear in Italy, a lot of people ride. He knows a lot of cyclists and uh, he knows a lot of brands of bikes. He was very passionate about also the bike itself. And uh, when he was on Ghisallo, one of the famous climb of Giro di Lombardia, he knows this guy was a crazy artisan that he lives in Bergamo area. And this guy ro rode uh, titanium bikes. It was, that was the first time that Luciano saw a titanium bikes in real life. That type of bike was mm, not so common, but a lot of people ask telling about American bike, titanium road bike, but in, Ita in Italy and in Europe, mm, titanium was not so common. Just uh, to help our listeners, titanium on the 80s became a little more accessible to do other materials because of the aeronautic uh, doing airplanes. And so we started a wave of bicycle manufacturers in the United States. Uh, Merlin Frameworks was one, Lightspeed was another one. And I think they, they showed to the world that titanium was a very interesting material in alternative to aluminum or to, to steel. Yeah, exactly. The main problem of that area in that the, in Europe, you cannot find any tubes in titanium. So you have to do by your own. You have to buy titanium sheets, bend mm -hmm. it and put it together to create tubes with um, the, the shapes that you want. It was a crazy long process, super difficult to make it straight and tough. To increase stiffness with that method, uh, Passoni was the first the first guys in the bike industry to put some titanium blades in it to increase stiffness of the tubes and on the top the very first frame made by Passoni the tag name of, of the top was animus titanium so in, in latin means titanium soul because there is mm -hmm. also titanium in the titanium yeah. in the discussion that all the metal frames has a different soul than carbon fiber even though it's evolving a lot but on the early carbon fiber yeah exactly back in the day, back in 90s uh, i want to talk about uh, another things that uh, you mentioned before about the pro ride in the early 90s um, the only way to have a lighter bike than steel is was to use titanium there were a lot of Riders that came to the Passoni factory to have a proper bike fitting and to a perfect climbing machine. Mm -hmm. The bike, of course, uh, were always rebranded with the colors and the logos of the team. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you look the photos uh, very closely, you can clearly recognize all the Passoni signature details on this bike. Yeah, the bikes were so ahead of time that. They lead to some of the most prestigious victory in Giro d'Italia and through the front stages. Wow. And, but uh, Passoni has also experimented with carbon. It was only in the first aim to Passoni is always been to create the most prestigious and perfect bike in the world. Of course, during the carbon era, the carbon was was the material to be chosen because mm -hmm. everybody wants the carbon and the carbon was the newest one. So yeah, Passoni started to use uh, carbon and they created the first carbon frame of their company in 2001. And this frame is called the Futura. Passoni Futura was so ahead of time that it was so expensive to make it because the mold mm, must have a lot of curves uh, and strange stuff so basically it was like a one-off so only once was made and the frame is here near me 
Can you show, can you turn the camera so we can have sure. a look at our viewers? So this is a single unit. It's the only one yeah. that had good. Wow, that very interesting. Yeah, there is some study of carbon of aeroflow even before the all the aero stuff of the new cycling industry. There is a lot of study of Luca in this bike about aeroflow and all the aerodynamic parts of the bikes. But yeah, it was too expensive to make it, so this one off. The other bike but that we we were talking before this program and actually there's some latest launches from an Italian manufacturer that takes some references of this Futura model that was done almost 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, if you look close, closely, there is a lot of similar parts to another brand. Yeah, it's like a copycat of our frame of 2001. Oh, homage, let's say uh, some inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But going ahead, uh, the Futura was a great learning, but didn't prove economically feasible to sell a frame. How the experiment with a carbon continued at Passoni? Exactly. After the Futura experiment, there is another Animus Titanium that was super famous at the time and was the first carbon frame of the, in a regular production of, of, of Passoni. Is the, it's called Titanium because the carbon was a monocoque frame but there is a lot of parts in titanium, especially on the bottom bracket shell, on the dropouts and the head tubes. Because- uh, Can you show mm, to, to us? Sure, you yes, have sure. It close. So this has a titanium with a carbon on top. Exactly, there is titanium parts like head tubes, bottom bracket and dropouts, while all other things is carbon. Beautiful. Yeah, the Luca for on this particular project was to make a carbon frame with a titanium sole in the riding field. So all the parts that, that touches the ground, the most critical parts are made in titanium. Mm -hmm. And this philosophy is even now, nowadays uh, is used in Passoni because it's, uh, it's the signature style of the riding field of Passoni. Matteo, how did the company evolve? Because at the start with Luciano, it was almost a state of art. It was a very manual, very individual. Each frame was a little different than the other because it was a craft of a, a human being. How did Passon incorporate technology and science over the years? And everything that became available to perform and manufacture better bikes, more trustable bikes, long-term lasting bikes. Yeah. And now the tubes, uh, of course, are not made by hand anymore, but uh, every Passoni frames, even today, are still made here inside our factory be behind this wall. We only use the best uh, available partners in the bike industry. And the only ones that share with us the same principle and the same philosophy of our company. We try every year with these partners to improve a new solution to make our bike even better. From our titanium supplier to our, uh, um, our wheels brand, we try to have all the, all these guys in Europe or we always try to have all made in Italy bikes, mm -hmm. at least made in Europe bikes. So we try to have all the brands near us and it's a, it's a very difficult thing to do nowadays because of course, a lot of, a lot of company try to produce everything overseas. But then so, you have more competitive costs, but the quality is not as superior as uh, you have more control and closer to you. Exactly. Especially the control of the manufacturer. We are able to, to meet all our, all our partner in 
three hours and we can see all the production process, all every from the German brand KHM that produced for us the super light component like stem, crank set, and brakes. Tenium, Reynolds, super famous uh, company in UK for producing steel and titanium tubes. With two hours flight, we are able to meet the guy of Reynolds and says, okay, we need something more. We have to improve the weight of the bikes. We have to increase the stiffness. So yeah, it's very important to have all the partners really close to you. How was the change in geometry changing from ring brakes to disc brakes? Yeah, uh, disc brakes was, uh, I think, one of the biggest changes in bike industry in the neck in the last 20 years. It was a huge problem at first because as, as a, a new improvement came in the bike industry, there is a lot of standards. So you have to choose carefully which, which standard you think is the best. And uh, yeah, we had uh, some struggle at first because uh, post mount uh, and uh, flat mount standard are different from nowadays. But yeah, we have to do a lot of prototypes. Our ambassadors uh, help us a lot to create the perfect uh, disc machine, uh, disc uh, brake uh, bikes. Because of course, it's uh, another different thing. It's totally different. The geometry changed a lot. Uh, you need a lot of uh, more wheelbase because with the brake, the brake is more powerful and uh, you can, sorry, I have to think about the question and I can, I have to, I have to think okay. the question in Italian and uh, then speak to you. Yeah, the main problem is that the geometry is quite different. The wheelbase must be wider because you need the more, more relaxed geometry because of the brake powers. This is the first part. But of course, even the highness, the height of the bottom bracket must change, the slack the rake of the fork must be different. So a lot of part changes. Uh, a disc brake bike needs to have a, a longer wheelbase because of yeah. the effect of the brake. Yeah. Is that a super easy question? Because there is tons of things that change from the road to these bikes in if we have to speak about geometry, wheelbase is one of the most important parts because yeah, it must be a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. While the head tube angle also must change between rim and disc. Mm -hmm. With rim brake, you have to you can do you can go for a very extreme and super reactive bikes. With the disc ones, you have to be very careful because the brake power can be dangerous on ride, on super hilly and difficult ride. So yeah, you have to do, you have to be more careful. Because it's almost like when you touch the brake, you can squeeze the frame somehow because the wheel stops and then the whole frame has a some kind yeah. of movement, and that could yeah, create exactly. a stress point. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, unfortunately, with titanium, we don't have uh, any failure about the material itself. But uh, with this break uh, on carbon, we had some problems uh, on the prototypes of, of, of on prototype stages. We have to do a lot of tests for our uh, new dropouts and new geometry of the, the Fidia, our newest road bike. Matteo, when everybody's talking about uh, carbon, carbon fiber, and Passoni still builds, uh, continues to build beautiful titanium bikes. Why titanium nowadays? Titanium, even today, is a super nice material because it's all about the riding feel. 
a lot of our customers says that our titanium bikes is like riding a magic carpet. The feeling that titanium can provide to you is like a super comfortable, but at the same time, super reactive. It's not about just performance, but it's around the ride itself. If you are able to compare the same bike with the same geom the same geometry, the same bike with the same geometry, but different material, you have to you are able to to feel the real difference. And these things in our titanium bind is even more, or even more important than the other titanium brands, because we still have a lot of pieces made from solid piece of titanium. So these parts can enrich the experience and enrich the micro the reduction of micro vibration of the road. Things a carbon frame can never achieve even with the correct amount of fiber in the right places. And I'm a witness and a disclaimer here because I'm passionate for titanium bikes. I had an American titanium bikes when it first became available. And then almost 10 years ago, I did a custom made titanium frame, which is my preferred, is my only bike. And I witnessed the evolution because the first one was extremely comfortable and fun to ride, but it was a little flexy. So in accelerations or in doing turns, it wasn't the best. The evolution that titanium tubes and works and materials had achieved, I think, the best of all worlds on vertical and horizontal compliance, uh, that every time I ride a new bike, I'm I get interested in it, but then I go back to my titanium bike and say, I'll stay here for the time being. And what feedback you have from uh, your clients, customers that had ridden a carbon frame and then decided to buy a titanium frame from Passoni? Yeah, let's say that our most important clients are the expo riders that used the carbon frame for all his career. And then after their retirement, want uh, a different bikes. Mm, they want a bike that can last years and years, a bike that can be precise of his, for his size and not with crazy long stem or a super high saddle on the frame. That's perfect for them. And yeah, we have the, we are super lucky because we had a lot of pro riders and yeah, the feedback was always great. Everybody sent us an email after the first ride and said, so this one is really made to measure bikes. I feel so, so much better than my old carbon bikes. I can ride for all the days and my, my, my back doesn't have any pain and my neck in, is in the correct position and uh, my elbows doesn't break at the first holes. Yeah, it's, it's always a nice thing to, to receive this kind of feedback by guys who use cycling as who cycling for jobs for almost than 20 years. Because yeah, we are still thinking that we are doing the, in the correct way. We are, our job is uh, in the correct way. And Matteo, why do a custom frame instead of buying a production line, a mass volume frame? What is the difference? What's the benefit of doing a bike that was designed on your precise measures and proportions? <laughs> mm, a lot of people mm, thinks about made to measure bikes just for the, the size itself of the bike, but it's not only this. Having a made to measure bikes uh, means that you have a bike with the correct amount of seat post, 
current length of stem. And the best part, in my opinion, is that you can actually choose which ride behavior must have the bike. So if a client came to us and says, I want a super comfortable bike, we can do that with mm -hmm. our name on it. If you want a super racing crit machine a bike, we can do that. And with our brand on it. In another, in the regular, let's say regular in bike industry, you have to choose brands between the characteristic of the bike itself. Mm -hmm. If you choose a Passoni, you can have all kinds of bikes uh, made by us. So basically you can choose every behavior of the bikes. If you want a bike that you can ride for, uh, I don't know, let's say have doing the race acro across America, we can do. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, to have a bike to, um, to smash in the velodrome of Milano, you can do that. So it's nice. It, it's, this is the best part of having a made to measure bike, in my opinion. It's exactly the bike that you want for the performance and the characteristics that you like. Yeah, exactly. And Matteo, how is the process of doing a made to measure bike with Passoni? Yeah. Mm. As I told you before, everything is made here in our house. And the process starts with a client that came in, have a visit, see how all the bikes are made, see our showroom with all our models in it. And then you can show, you, you can, the client can see all the components, the colors, the finishing kit, about leather bar tape or normal bar tape, mm, super lightweight components or regular components. And then we can have a bike fitting here in our company. My colleague is a bike fitter and is the guy who in charge for making geometry. So this, these two parts is super important because a lot of bike fitter as are super let's say focused on just on the size and on the measurement of the body, but they doesn't think about the riding itself. This is a very important part. After proper bike fitting, the bikes can be put into production. And nowadays our production queue is around four months and if the clients want, we can, we can share with him all the photos of the stages of the bikes being built. Wow. It's a, a very nice part in my opinion, because yeah, it's like a picture of a, a child. So it's, it's a very nice part. And, and yeah, after four months, the bike will be put here in our showroom and ready to be collected. A lot of a lot of customers decide to take the bikes uh, when they are in holidays, they were all in holidays in Italy, because so he can go out of the door and then cycling to Bormio, to Lago di Garda, even on the Dolomites, this, the very same day of the, the, the bike delivered. It's like so having the perfect bike and a bicycle in paradise, which is the north of yes. Italy, the lakes that you mentioned, the Dolomite, the, it's just incredible. And Matteo, when every now and then you guys have to plan a new model, even though it's a custom bike, but there's some references for the clients to choose, uh, how does this process works? You said that there was a major challenge going from rim brakes to disc brakes, but nowadays, like for example, more versatile bikes such as gravel bikes or any other trends, how does this process happen in Passoni? Yeah, the process of creating a new bike is, of course, all my favorite part. Everything starts with an idea, an idea that could came out from nowhere 
for jobs from month and month of study of market and customer requests. After that, we spend a lot of time with our frame builders that, by the way, are guys with more than 30 years of experience on, on building bikes to refine the ideas and to study all together the critical parts of the project, also from a mechanical point of view, of course. After that, it's time to make some 3D sketches and 3D printing models of course, for scaled model of the bikes. All these models and idea uh, after this uh, are shared with a team of an external engineering with, uh, with uh, he evaluated, uh, they evaluated the project from technical and according the certification standards. So um, this is the first part. The second part, of course, is once all the tests succeeded, it's time to build the first rideable prototype uh, with the aim to be studied by, of course, by us, by the guy of the workshop and by our ambassador. And they are, uh, and of course, our main ambassador are ex pro so a guy who knows how to ride. This is a very important moment to receive the final feedback, to fine tune the project and then officially launch the new model. Yeah, this process seems quite quick, but actually takes several months. Yeah, we are currently working on a new model based on our third anniversary bike and we are expecting to see the result only in 10 months from now. Wow. Yeah, we are super small and we are artisans and he needs time to do the things properly. Yeah. How do you see the trend in products and use, in materials and use? Today we have the metals, so we have the old steel, yeah. aluminum, which is coming back with better technology. Titanium, of course, carbon, maybe 3D printing. On materials, what you guys are looking as possible trends that Passoni might offer to your... Yeah. I would like to, to talk about the trends itself because these are very important things that we have to... We spoke a lot here in, in our company about that. We are... In the niche of the cycling industry and the trends are important, but they aren't a game changer as they are for big. So we know that a lot of innovation are made ad hoc by the big bike industry giants to push people to change their bikes more and more often. And our approach is totally different. Our approach has always been different because we try to study trends and we are looking for the best solution to adopt without forcing the end user to make a forced decision. Mm -hmm. Even today, our 20% uh, of our bike are still rim brakes because yeah, it's cool having also rim brakes in this area, in this area. Uh, I still ride the <laughs> yeah. rim brake and love yeah. it. About the trends, uh, of course, there is trends in mechanical and mechanical stuff, but also in design part. The design is a very important part of our aesthetics and of our brand. We spend more than 30 hours to just polish the frame only for the look. Yeah, so it's super important. The, the most important part of this thing is to stay consistent with our design, avoiding crazy and stupid design trends that nowadays are more and more common in bike industries. So yeah, we are proud of our heritage and our history and we try to have uh, the same design again and again. But of course, uh, mm, we are aware of the fact that 
to stay in the market, we need to follow the most recent standard. And uh, for example, I don't know, fully integrated cable routing and bigger type clearance, ceramic bearings and all that stuff. So yeah, we most difficult part is to mix classical design and modern content in one single bike. This is the, the most difficult part of our job nowadays. But so far, you guys are doing a great work. Keep doing that. And one question about e-bikes. E-bikes mm -hmm. is a very strong trend, even though a little slower than some people expected, but especially on the CTUs, the, the urban. Is it is Passoni looking into having a possible e-bike in the future? Yes, of course, uh, is one of our, as you just said, uh, is the biggest trend in the market. We produced a first prototype for a Eurobike 2022 with our partners, uh, Zeus um, Electric Hubs. So we produced the, um, let's say, commuting bikes, titanium mm -hmm. commuting bikes for the city. And now we are looking for different things because we test the bikes uh, is great, but not as great as Fasoni wants. So we have to do some modifications, some changing some tubes, changing some shapes of the bike. Because of course the geometry is super important because the bike will not be made to measure, will be standard sizes. So the size will be even more important. Sure. And yeah, I think that by the end of 2023, we will see a electric Fasoni commuting bike in the market. It's going to be very interesting because it's uh, the classical, the experience, the art uh, meeting the future and the advancing technology, which I personally believe is a very strong trend that we're going to see a lot of very fast evolutions on electric motors, on bicycles. There's a lot of challenges today on cost, on range, on battery placement, but uh, I, even though I love to and rim brakes, but I also believe that's a different sport. When you put a motor on a bicycle, you have so many other options to do and to have fun that I embrace and follow curious and anxious to see which translation Passoni would give us on the mix between the best of the past and the best of the future.